Hey everyone, welcome to another video on Snowflake technology. Today we're going to learn about Snowpipe, continuous data ingestion into Snowflake's cloud data warehouse. Depending on architectural requirements of your project, you may employ various strategies to ingest data into Snowflake's cloud data warehouse. Snowpipe is one such strategy specifically designed for micro-batching wherein you can ingest a few files in a day or millions of files in a minute into your data warehouse. In this video, we will mainly focus on micro-batching the files and ingesting them into Snowflake as soon as they arrive in the staging area using Snowpipe. In this video, we are going to look at some more details related to Snowpipe. After that, we will look at architecture related to Snowpipe and also the data flow of this demo. We will create a talent job that is going to create us CSV files that we are going to use to load into Snowflake's cloud data warehouse using Snowpipe. We are also going to look at AWS side of configuration to create and facilitate the Snowpipe. Finally, we will look at the data that we loaded into Snowflake. We will also explore further about how Snowpipe is going to affect your billing and some functions to manipulate your Snowpipe. Let's get started. Today's IoT sensors, web applications, mobile apps and other devices generate huge amount of analytically useful data. Snowpipe provides lightweight and scalable service to ingest all these kinds of data. There are two approaches to ingest data into Snowpipe. First one uses REST endpoints and second one uses auto-ingest. We will look at a demo related to auto-ingest in detail. Let's first review both of these approaches. In the first step, incoming data files are all staged in either Snowflake's internal staging area or Amazon's S3 buckets or Azure's blob storage. You can also set up notification from these services to kick off a process uh, be it in a EC2 instance or a serverless Lambda function and that Lambda function can take the details of the staged file and then reference to the pipe and call the REST endpoint and that calls the ingesting queue. Snowpipe takes care of rest of the process to ingest the data in your files into the table that was referenced in the Snowpipe definition. Java and Python code samples of calling these REST endpoints are available on GitHub and this feature is available today for you to use in your production environment too. So this was about first generation of Snowpipe. We also have second generation of Snowpipe eliminates this second step essentially you just have to create the stage environment and then connect it to Snowpipe and that's it you drop your files continuously onto the staging area and Snowpipe and Snowflake infrastructure will take care of ingesting that file into the table. It will take care of availability of servers and capacity adjustments as needed to meet the needs of a single file or millions of files. In order to simulate a good scenario, we are going to create a talent ETL job that is going to create four or five large data files with 100 million records in each one of them generated for each year and then we will stage them in AWS S3 buckets. We will configure our Snowpipe to pull the data from the AWS staging area into Snowflake's table. In order to simulate a large data set usage in this Snowpipe, I'll create a talent ETL job that will generate sample patients list of a million records in each file and uh, we will generate it for each year. We will then stage that data into AWS. We will configure AWS so that it gets connected to Snowpipe and Snowpipe takes care of ingesting the staged data into Snowflake. Let's get started with Talent. So in case of Talent, I have a very simple job which has T row generator. Let's open it. It has four columns. The first one is patient ID which is a sequence number. Second one is a randomly generated first name. Third one is 
random city name and then finally a hard-coded registration year I send this data into a CSV file let's look at its properties so it is sending it to temp snow3 folder and the file name will be patients data 2016.csv so let's make it 2019 as I had the 19 data and run this save it run the file is created with million records let's verify that so I have patients data 2019 here so as expected we have patient ID first name city name and then the year we created CSV data files now let's move on to AWS and see what configuration we will have to do so in case of AWS first we will create a S3 bucket which will act as staging area to store all our data files then we'll create a user and a policy in IAM to grant read-only access to that newly created S3 bucket for Snowpipe we will use the credentials that are generated for that new user and we should be able to connect the Snowpipe to the AWS S3 bucket using those credentials let's get into AWS I go to S3 create a brand new bucket I will leave it in US East doesn't matter I'm not going to copy any settings I'm going to leave these as defaults I'm fine with it I'm fine with these two and I'll create the bucket okay we have it here I'm going to create a user who will have read access to this bucket and I'll use that user in my snow pipe you go to I am users I'll add a brand new user called for snow pipe data user and he will have access programmatic access with with key ID and access key and I don't want to log into console so I'll leave it as is then I go to attach existing policies and I'll create a new brand new policy and the service is s3 and what do I want the user to have access to he should be able to list and read all the files I don't want it to have access to all the s3 buckets but I want it to be very specific to this bucket so I say add so it's going to give access only to this bucket and any special conditions no I'm fine with this review the policy policy name snow pipe policy create it now I search for that snow policy user pol snow pipe user policy now I need to assign this policy to the user that I have created so I go to policy usage and I say attach and do I have the right user here let's search for snow pipe user okay and I say attach policy now the user should be able to programmatically connect to the s3 bucket and access the data now let's go back to the user and get his security credentials these two pieces of information while creating the snow pipe I will for now I'll just download the CSV file so that I have it handy let's switch back to the third part that is snowflake part of configuration and snow pipe creation just let's use the demo DB and create a patient table which will have patient ID first name city and registration year just like how we had in the incoming data 
although column names are different but that should be fine next i need to create a stage i will call it as a patient's no stage and i need to supply the s3 bucket name here so let's go back to s3 and copy that bucket name that we had here patient's data snow pipe and then we need to supply the key id and security key which is also here and then i have mentioned file format as csv csv is a file format that i have defined here so let's take a quick look at that under demo db i have let's go into that uh, i have file format i do not have it let's create it so file format csv uh, csv is a file format that i've created which is a simple straightforward csv file um, so let's go ahead and create this stage it is created successfully so if you list stages you will see that our newly created stage is here which is great so let's move ahead to the next step so to create a snow pipe here is a statement you will say create or replace pipe and then the pipe name and auto ingest equal to true i'll come back to this in a minute as copy into patients table and then from the stage called patients no stage and the file format is csv in this case let's go ahead and run this command now we can show the pipe Auto ingest feature was for private preview only and was enabled on request up until last year. This year it is available for all editions of Snowflake and is production ready. This is the simplest form of syntax to create Snowpipe. Please refer to Snowflake's documentation for all other extended parameters. What this statement does is it creates a Snowpipe that recognizes the CSV files that are ingested from external stage and copies the data into patients table we need to do one last setup we need to configure our aws s3 such that it notifies snowpipe about the arrival of a new file that should be ingested into snowflake let's copy this arn and switch to our aws s3 bucket settings uh, this is the S3 bucket, I go to properties, I go to events here, and then click on a not add notification. Let's snow, snow pipe no. And whenever a new object is created, all object create events. So this means whenever a new CSV file is dropped into S3 bucket, what do I want it to do? I want AWS to let an SQS event be triggered and we need to paste the ARN that we copied from the snow pipe. So this is, so essentially when whenever AWS receives a new file, it is going to trigger this SQS event, which essentially triggers snow pipe execution and that will ingest the file. So I save this. Now all the configurations are completed. If we drop the CSV file into S3 bucket, it should trigger the SQS and that should in turn call the ARN of Snowpipe and Snowpipe should pick up the file that was just created and copy the contents into patients table. Let's upload the files. Add, I select 2017 first. I upload it it is warning me that these files are not this file is not going to be accessible publicly which I'm fine with but snowpipe will have access to it upload with the default settings started uploading since it's a large file it will take a while and also to ingest into a snowflake with the snowpipe it is going to take a minute or so um, initial setup takes um, takes more time maybe five to ten minutes but then once it is set up then it uh, it should start ingesting files almost at one minute per 
uh, per file of uh, say 100 million records let's check if we have the data not yet there we have our 100 million records there we have so let me upload the next file I will upload both uh, both the files 2018 and also 2019 data files Okay, both of them are updated. Let's run the query here and see if they arrived. So there we have it. 300 million records are in. For best performance, you should chunk the data files into 50 MB or less in compressed format and ingest them. Let's see some commands to check the status of the snow pipe. System snowpipe uh, status, this shows the current status of the snowpipe. You can see it is running here. You can also pause it. Let's check the status. It is paused. You can again uh, unpause it or you can resume the pipe. Next, billing. To see the billing, let's run this query. It shows you the usage of one of the snow pipe that I've used, but you can also query for all of the snow pipes you may be having or individual ones. Snow pipe billing may take up to three hours before it shows up in your account. You can also see the same thing in account. You can see snow pipe here. So the billing related to only snow pipe on February 29, we had some billing. It's almost negligible credits used. We go back. And the last part was event notification issues and error handling. Let's look at that. In order to troubleshoot, you can use the copy history. This shows uh, all the history of copies that we have done on the table. Validate pipe load shows the list of uh, errors you may have received while loading the data into your snow pipe. So that was about the demo. In this demo, I was dropping the files manually onto S3 bucket, whereas in real life, the files may be getting created by end users or some other processes such as Kafka or AWS Firehose or maybe some other ETL process. Snowpipe also works on Azure infrastructure in a similar way and uh, with minor syntax differences. You can refer to the documentation. Snowflake has great documentation on their website. If you have any questions around Snowpipe or any of the challenges, please do comment out. I would love to answer them. If you learned something out of this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel to be notified about the new videos that get added to the channel. Thank you.